So I took my mother to see Deep Throat. Deep, 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 deep. deep Throat. So I'll admit, I had absolutely no interest in talking about the CNN Town Hall with John Hickenlooper, but then I watched it and then I thought, oh my God, how can I not talk about this after seeing how absurd it was? So initially my expectations were that it would just be boring because he's really a milquetoast center-right candidate. I have no interest really in hearing what he has to say. However, it didn't necessarily go in the way that, that I thought it would, um, because it got really weird. So for those of you clicking on this video, hoping to hear about policy substance, I wholeheartedly apologize because this is going to be one of those segments where you're not going to see very much policy substance. Um, but to give you the rundown so nobody's disappointed, he is against the death penalty. He's against legalizing marijuana nationwide, although he supports states doing it. He's against Medicare for All, and he supports civilian oversight committees in order to stop police brutality against black Americans. And he also talked about a lot of other policies, and he also watched porn with his mom once. Wait, what? <laughs> I, I cannot get over this. I, I can't get over this. In this town hall, you're going to see him talk about watching porn with his mom. A presidential candidate will do that. But before we get to that, first, I want to talk about one of the rebuttals he had to a question about him potentially choosing a woman as a running mate. Some of your male competitors have vowed to put a woman on the ticket. Yes or no? Would you do the same? Why? Well, again, uh, of course. But I think that we should be, well, I'll, I'll ask you another question. How come we Wait, aren't I'm ask asking the question? I know. <laughs> I know, but how come we're not asking, we're not asking more often the women, would you be willing to put a man on the ticket? We're not asking that because there's already been 45 male vice presidents and there's been zero female vice presidents. Now, that's not to say that we should prioritize identity above qualifications and policy substance because, of course, that is is less important. I certainly wouldn't vote for someone like Sarah Palin or Carly Fiorina just because they're women, obviously. But the point is that there are enough qualified progressive women, which he's not going to choose a progressive, but there are enough women that you can choose. And if we have the opportunity to do that, if the qualifications and the policy substance is there, then I think you should prioritize choosing a woman as your running mate, because I think it's important that we do boost representation and make our country more equitable. So his response there, it just tells me that he is incredibly out of touch and you get the sense really that he is out of touch because he's running on a platform that would only be progressive perhaps in the 90s, if even. But even back then, I think his platform would be relatively milquetoast. So he's running at a time when there's this anti-establishment fervor in the country, and what he's bringing to the table is more of the same. He's saying, I will get in and protect the status quo. He's not explicitly saying that, to be clear, but that's essentially what is functionally going to happen if he's elected. So I've got no interest in him as a candidate. So with that being said, we've got all the substance out of the way. We are now officially entering the no substance zone. So it is safe to close out of the video if you don't want to hear me talking about John Hickenlooper taking his, <laughs> taking his mom to see Deep Throat. So... <laughs> It's like half nauseating, half so absurd that I can't help but laugh and giggle over this. So here's the clip. He's asked the question by Dana Bash, and he's going to give a really long, drawn-out answer as to how this happened and what possessed him to take his mom to see Deep Throat. Take a look. You've been looking at uh, your memoir, and you have a lot of interesting stories in that book. One of them is about the time you went to see an X-rated movie oh. with your mother. Oh. You have the floor, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much for that question. Anytime. Um, I thought it was better to write a book to let people really see who you were and, and the dumb things you did as well as the smart things. And, and where is that on the <laughs> that's spectrum? To, on the dumb side. Okay. <laughs> I, I was the youngest of four, and as I said, my dad died uh, right after I turned eight, and my mother and I had a pretty tempestuous relationship. She was just the most amazing person, and 
And I went off to college, and, and for the first time, she was alone in the house. And I didn't realize how powerful that was until I got home at Thanksgiving. I promised, I called a friend in Philadelphia, and these were, ex I didn't know what an X movie was. We thought it was a little naughty, but we didn't think it was that bad. <laughs> I, I, again, you gotta understand, I was 18 years old. And so I came home, and my mother hated to cook. I mean, she, she was just a strong, powerful woman who got stuff done in her own right. And I got home, and she had this huge dinner laid out. And I said, oh, I promised, you know, I promised Jed that we would go to the, the movie theater and see this, this new movie. Uh, you want to come? And I, I, it's an X movie. I don't know. I, you know, I just, and she, I was sure that she wouldn't say no. I made a mistake. And she said, I'd love to go, because she didn't want to be left alone in the house again. It was a pretty famous movie, too. So I took my mother to see Deep Throat. And, <laughs> and, and, and to her credit, the first scene is, <laughs> I didn't ask the question. But, but I will tell you, I will tell you that my mother, my mother was, uh, I'm, I'm sure she was mortified. And, and I said repeatedly, I think we should leave, I think we should go. And my mother was the kind of person that rarely went to a movie. She thought almost every movie would get on TV. Uh, so obviously not this one. Uh, but she was, she really, once she paid, she was going to stay. And, and at the end, she knew that I was humiliated. And as we drove home, uh, and you know how the dashboard in the old cars had that kind of green light? And, and I, you know, she, I asked her, I said, well, that was some experience. And she goes, she says, well, I thought the lighting was very good in the movie. <laughs>
oh my god. <laughs> this <laughs> this is what <laughs> Hickenlooper is going to beat his meat to. Ew. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with the world? This is a sick world, ladies and gentlemen. This is a sick, sick world. And I don't know why I'm contributing to this by talking about this. But I think that it's safe to say that this is disqualifying. Um, he should just drop out. Drop out of the race. If you've watched porn with your mom, then I don't think you have anything left to say to us that can win us over. If I found out that Bernie Sanders watched porn with his mom, I... I don't know if I could vote for him. <laughs> Because that's a level of absurd and just, frankly, gross that I don't know that I can get past because I would always associate Bernie with him watching porn with his mom. So, yeah, this is a real story. And John Hickenlooper explained for a couple of minutes how he ended up taking his mom to see a movie called Deep Throat. But hey... She thought that the lighting in the movie was good. Yeah. I'm assuming the lighting in most pornographic flip flicks is uh, going to be on point because they have to make sure that they get all the light into the, you know, dark little crevices, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so bad. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.